Hello, I'm Jorge Getoso. Welcome to a new program from Washington. On today's show, the integration of the Americas. Our guest, the Foreign Minister of Uruguay, Luis Almagro. Mr. Almagro, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. Mr. Foreign Minister, what is the situation of Uruguay regarding Haiti? It's uh, very clear. We have explained this in the, in the past. Uh, for us, it's very relevant uh, to follow the events in Haiti. We expect the situation there to be according to democratic rules, to have uh, full guarantees of rights, political and civil. And uh, so far, this situation is uh, sustained on this basis. We can uh, keep on our presence of, of troops there. If this uh, situation changes, changes. And we don't have any more these uh, democratic conditions, then we definitely have to think about other possibilities regarding this, the presence of the troops. Uh, by now, what we have is uh, the effort of the government in order to achieve uh, democratic agreements with the opposition and to have uh, transparent and clean elections. And for us, those are relevant matters and we want to support this. So far, you know too that Uruguay, we have decreased the presence of troops in Haiti. Since we started in 2010 till now, we brought this troop from 1,200 uh, soldiers to 250 soldiers, that is the last agreement and with the idea of uh, uh, keeping our deals with UNASUR countries and very likely to end our presence next year uh, according to this gradual withdrawal of, of troops. Because uh, there was sort of um, mixed messages. There was a moment that the future foreign minister was saying that Uruguay was on its way to withdraw overnight the blue helmets in Haiti. Is that true? Uh, no. Uh, we have been coordinating and this coordination has been very easy to do with Rodolfo. Rodolfo Nin. Rodolfo Nin Novoa, my uh, successor. successor. And uh, Eleuterio Fernandez Huidobro, uh, the Minister of Defense, that is the minister now and he will go on as a minister in, in, the, in the next term. During this uh, meeting we have practically agreed in all the, the points. And what uh, Rodolfo said is exactly what I have said now. If there are guarantees for democracy and uh, fulfillment of all obligations under international rules of Haiti, uh, in Haiti, then we we'll definitely stay there according to these last agreements that we have with, with the United Nations. Rodolfo Ninovoa was even mentioning that was very close to be a dictatorship, Haiti. It was that he was his analyzing. personal? He said, no. He, he, what he said, um, I don't like to explain <laughs> other people's words, but I know what he, what he said and what he, he meant, uh, is uh, that uh, in, um, you have to follow the events closely. And if there, uh, there were signs of a uh, pre-dictatorship, then of course we should move our soldiers away. But that is very clear I and it's very consistent to what I have just said, that so far there are democratic guarantees in Haiti, we stay there. If these uh, democratic guarantees suddenly disappear, then we move away. It's, uh, it's very clear, and we have expressed this three years ago. Regarding the OAS, the Organization of American States, OEA in Spanish, by the end of May, it finishes the second term of the actual, the current Secretary General, Jose Miguel Insulza. And uh, they are pretty much strong indications, I will say, my words, uh, that uh, you could be having the necessary votes to be his successor. Uh, are you ready to take over? Yes, I was uh, ready already when I, uh, I, uh, we presented uh, Your candidacy. my candidacy to fulfill that post. And, and uh, so far, yeah, we have uh, developed a working plan and uh, we have had uh, contacts with practically all the countries in, in the continent. These contacts have been permanent. 
we have picked up all uh, the necessary changes and adjustments in our working plan according to uh, priorities and suggestions of uh, most of the countries of the continent. And we will keep working together with other countries uh, till the election comes. We have heard President Obama in the State of the Union address by the end of uh, January, uh, mentioning uh, not only that the his intention to re-establish relations with Cuba, but also asking Congress to end up the blockade or the embargo, as they call it in English. Um, so there's a new chapter in the relations between the U.S. and Cuba. If you are the next Secretary General of the OAS, what is your vision, your position regarding that new era, that new stage? There is a new chapter in the continent, the hemisphere. Uh, now we have a different relation also with, uh, between the United States and the rest of the continent. And this agenda now suddenly is very positive. And we have <coughs> many uh, aims that we can take in the next uh, period of the For organization example. of American states to work the four pillars uh, of the strategic vision of the Organization of American States, to develop uh, an agenda for development in the, in the continent, to bring closer the cooperation, international cooperation of a very developed country, the most developed country and the most powerful uh, country in the world, with the continent in, in different terms, on different basis than what it used to be. And it's also a very good starting point to leave behind the Cold War. What the Organization of American States' main problem was, that was the last organization in this world to leave behind the Cold War. And this remaining of these problems between uh, the United States and Cuba was keeping the things in a very low profile of the relation. And having a permanent problem there to understand each other between the Latin Americans and the United States. Now the United States has a, a different attitude and a different policy and a, po and a positive agenda regarding the situation in the continent. So we expect that under those new circumstances we can develop this uh, new cooperation uh, agenda that is, is requested to bring uh, more development in the, in the agenda of the hemisphere, uh, more equality, uh, different conditions of cooperation, as I said, and, uh, and different terms of political dialogue. Because precisely regarding the OAS, uh, in, the, in the years of the Cold War, uh, President Fidel Castro was very strong in his statement and he says the OAS is the minister of the colonies of the U.S. So do you think that with the end of uh, that stage and the new reestablishment of relations between Cuba and the U.S. that could change? Many things have happened since uh, Fidel said that in the continent and in the integration of our countries. You know? uh, it was a completely different view and our countries have already voted to uh, reincorporate uh, Cuba to the Organization of American States. So also we can mention the creation of, uh, the, of CELAC and the creation of UNASUR during these years. That brings different grades of cooperation between our country than it used to be. A different position of our country than they used to be in the 60s or, or the 70s during the dictatorships in the continent. Definitely we are thinking different and we are cooperating between us different. And we are, we have, uh, we have, uh, and all of our countries have established diplomatic relations with Cuba since long ago. They have, uh, long uh, terms of cooperation with Cuba and a very solid uh, friendship. So it's a completely different situation uh, that we are, uh, all our countries have been demanding the end of the embargo to Cuba and we have been demanding the uh, reestablishment of relations between Cuba and the United States. That moment arrived under completely different conditions. So far, the, the countries have changed 
the Organization of American States is changing too and have changed th uh, these necessary steps. Uh, talking about a uh, different stage or different era, if you want, in our uh, hemisphere, uh, we're going to have uh, relatively shortly this year a summit of the Americas in Panama. For the first time, Cuba is going to be participating together with the U.S. What can we expect? Can we expect uh, uh, the Cubans and, and Americans shaking hands and, and coordinating visits in, in each other country? Yes, we can expect many things. We can expect uh, uh, a lot of work between them. They still have to do many things in order to fully reestablish the, the, the relations in all different fields. And that is what they have to do. We, now what we can do is to praise the courage of uh, President Obama and President uh, Raul Castro in order to bring the two countries together and to pass uh, a page that was very dark in the continent. Now it's a they, they have to start working in order to reestablish all the different uh, um, grounds for cooperation between them. What about the relationship between the OAS and CELAC? Because there are some members of CELAC. Uh, just a quick uh, mention that CELAC is all the countries of uh, the Americas plus the Caribbean except the US and Canada. What about the possibility that CELAC replaces the OAS? Or, or because some of them... But they are two different organizations. Tell us about that. They are, they are very different between them. Uh, they are in the Organization of American States. Is, um, uh, we have uh, the possibility of a permanent strategic dialogue with the United States and Canada, all our countries. <coughs> we have uh, the possibility to sit and discuss the most important political issues in the continent and in the world. We have the possibility of cooperation between uh, the, the United States and the Latin American and Caribbean countries. And that's something completely different than CELAC. CELAC is a coordination, it's a unique voice between Latin American and Caribbean countries. We have to coordinate among us we can develop some other strategic dialogues like we are doing with China and with the European Union. So uh, CELAC is a way of working together. The Organization of American States is a, a way of working with the main power in the world and also with Canada. We are completely different kind of, uh, of, of, of work of the two organizations. And uh, room for the two of them? Of course, of course, there of course there is room for a permanent dialogue between Latin American and Caribbean countries like the United States and Canada. And not only there is room, it's very necessary. And we have to make it work in a very positive manner. So they're complementary, you would say? Yes, they are completely complementary. They will, they will do uh, completely different issues and they will uh, uh, abort uh, the, the different subjects on a different, completely different manner. Because once, as I said, is the coordination among us and how we present in, in, the, in the world. The other is a, a coordination with the main power, as that is. You were mentioning the, the recent meeting between CELAC and China, yes. precisely in Beijing, yes. um, which means that there's no doubt that China became a major player in Latin America is how you see the, the relationship of that new era of relationship between China precisely after that summit will be one of the most, uh, if you want, banking factor in terms of funding the relationship of the region. And is that meaning that the U.S. is losing influence at the expense of the uh, ground that China is, is gaining? You asked many questions in that one. The, the first one, it was very necessary. Uh, the thing there is that uh, the chapter of Latin America and the relation of between China and Latin America was a chapter in the strategic dialogue of between the United States and China, between uh, uh, European Union and, and China, between Japan and China. So, uh, but there was missing a direct dialogue between China, Latin America and Caribbean countries. That moment came we have been able to fix it, 
under a very interesting working plan with this uh, formula of uh, 1 plus 3 plus 6. That means to have a cooperation plan uh, um, based on uh, trade, financial cooperation and investment and to attack uh, different uh, areas. It can be natural resources, it can be infrastructure, it can be um, industri uh, industry, uh, informatic, uh, uh, science and technology, innovation. So uh, working on these uh, fil fields with China was uh, very necessary for Latin American countries to, to settle down all the instruments that are necessary in order to fully cooperate. The relation between China and, uh, and Latin American and Caribbean countries is there to stay. We have enjoyed that, uh, pushed us uh, out of uh, complications when the financial crisis in 2008, 2009, subsequently, <coughs> just because we were able to enjoy a cheaper offer of industrial goods and a more expensive offer from our side to uh, export our goods. And so the demand of China of our goods brought uh, the prices up for those uh, things that we export. Plus, the offer of China brought the prices down for those things we bought. So somehow we enjoyed during these years the uh, locomotive of China in the world economy. The relation with China doesn't su substitute the relation with the United States or with Japan or with the European Union. It adds something new, a new different uh, way of, uh, of working, and a new, f new fields of working and to be able to complement some other issues that we were already working with the United States and we keep working, like uh, all our countries have been able to develop our, our, our full and very uh, convenient uh, relation with the, with the United States or with the European Union. Yes, some, some of the people in Washington here have said in the past that Latin America was the backyard of the U.S. Do you think that with China playing a key role funding major projects, especially in infrastructure in Latin America, is not at least that much the backyard of the U.S.? Since we changed our attitude, the, ma the main problem to be considered a backyard in the past was the Latin American attitude, sort of um, too humbled by the circumstances. Uh, since uh, we have had new governments in Latin America and like Caribbean Like progressive countries, governments. Like uh, all these new governments can be of different ideological sign, but uh, have been very uh, adamant about positioning Latin America in, in the world and Caribbean countries in the world. And that completely changed the attitude and that was a possibility to create Celaco, to create UNASUR. We gained a lot of sovereignty in the last uh, 10 years in our countries. But we have completely changed the relation with the United States. And we were able to look forward to find new relations in the world on different basis than we were be, uh, we doing before. So that is the most convenient part. But it was, we had to change ourselves in order not to keep playing the role of the backyard of the United States. We have to change ourselves right. first. And then we were able to look and find around the world new possibilities. Narco-trafficking, one of the big threats to all the region. Uh, it has been repeatedly said that is a problem of uh, common uh, responsibility from the US as a consumer, as from Latin America as a producer. Okay. Basically, it has to be attacked in, in, a general, in general terms. Uruguay has uh, proposed a new avenue, which is legalizing marijuana, and supposedly it's going to start to take place during the month of March. Uh, tell us about why Uruguay has decided to go that route. Uh, to take a, a portion from the market of uh, the narcotraffic, to be able to assist people in a different way, considering human rights and health, um, bringing new solutions um, to uh, an old issue. If you keep doing the same, you will not change the result. So we started doing something different. We expect that this uh, new avenue that we are going along will bring uh, 
new solutions or will open the door to bring new solutions. Security is an issue in the whole continent and the thing is that you have to be closer to the people. Uh, security cannot be resolved in abstract, will not be resolved with formulas. It's something that it has to be adjusted permanently according to the new situations and new social situations, new economic situations, and considering every person in each corner of, your, of your our countries and our hemisphere. This formula brings us the possibility to work wi with people, to assist them if they get, uh, are falling into addiction, to assist them if their human rights are violated, to assist them if they have health problems. We'll be closer, and that is the thing that we may think, we think that it may change the, the things. That legislation passed during President Mujica administration, the one that you represent, and the new president takes over on the 1st of March, President-elect Tabaré Vázquez. And does it exist, the possibility that he uh, removed that legislation, that he says, no way, I don't agree, and the whole thing uh, no, the finished? No, the transitions, you know, uh, the, the logic of Uruguay during these years during the 10 years, the first uh, period of uh, President Tabari Vázquez, the period of uh, President Mujica, has been of continuity, providing more rights to more people. So far, this logic uh, has been going the same direction during 10 years and will go on in the same direction in the, the next five years. At the end of period of uh, Tabari Vázquez, we will have provided more rights to more people than even now. And uh, this means that they will not go back of what we have achieved already, but an improvement of the rights conditions of the people in the future. Do you think that there could be a reference or quote unquote an example for the neighboring countries in the region regarding marijuana, for example? That's a different uh, story. I think that uh, we have to consider, for example, the document of uh, the Organization of American States saying that uh, we should open the ground for new ways of co international cooperation, co cooperation related to, to drugs and to narcotraffic in order to fix these uh, social and security problems that we have been facing during all these years. Uh, and that it will is approach of many uh, Latin American and Caribbean countries. I don't think everybody can replicate what Uruguay have been doing. It's a solution that we found for us, uh, according to our social situation, according to our economic system, according to uh, the security conditions of, of the country. Uh, other countries will have to do and find the solutions that are more convenient for them. So finally, Mr. Minister, if now, let's assume that we are already the new Secretary General of the <laughs> OAS, how would you synthesize that is the main challenge that our region, our Americas in general, face today and you have to face as uh, priority number one sitting in your office as the Secretary General of the OAS. We have mentioned already the four pillars of the organizations and the organization and how we should work them in the future. There is something that our continent uh, have not been able to resolve. That is the continent that distributes the worst in the world. So our disparity, inequality. Inequality is the, uh, the trademark of the continent. That is something that has to be fixed. And that can be fixed through our, the internal policies of the country and with international cooperation, too. Uh, I think the Organization of American States has many tools, instruments, that can provide in order to fix these things, like the uh, inter-American system, uh, human rights system, like uh, all the network of uh, juridical and conventional obligations between our countries and uh, 
I think this is the biggest challenge, uh, integral development. When you have integral development, it means uh, that you have fixed human rights situations, that you have been able to provide more rights to more people, that uh, you have fixed security problems, that uh, you have been able to establish good basis for democracy and democratization. And all these things, they have to be worked together to bring a solution to this thing, to the problem of inequality. Inequality means that not all of us in the continent have the same rights. No, that not all of us in the continent can enjoy in the same way the same rights. So we have to provide solutions for that. And I think that is a work that the Organization of American States can help a lot to do, to achieve. Mr. Foreign Minister of Uruguay, Luis Almagro, thanks very much for joining us. A great pleasure.